Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily add a textured background to a portrait. So this past week, I got to photograph a charity event, which meant that I got to photograph all of these really cool themed characters. And it made for a really fun uh, weekend for the photographer because all these guys and girls had amazing hair and makeup and props and all kinds of stuff. So I got to make some pretty cool, fun portraits. And uh, I want to kind of stylize it and make it a little bit more... I, I guess, uh, fantasy themed, uh, all of these characters were based off of Greek gods and goddesses. And I want to kind of make a, I don't know, a magic, the gathering textured kind of parchment look to the background. So let's hop over to Lightroom and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're going to be editing this photo. As you can see, he kind of looks pretty cool. Yeah, had some really cool por uh, props and stuff. Um, I shot him on a black background. And I want to kind of just add a little hint of texture to the back of this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do a little bit of editing on this photo. I'm going to recover some of the highlights that got a little too bright. Do this. Um, zoom in. And uh, maybe add just a little bit of detail. Boost the shadows and uh, the eye sockets here. See if we can add a little creepiness in here. There's something always creepy about having those highlights poking through the through the really dark eye sockets. And then can I go go here, adjust some of my sharpening settings. Something like this. And then we're going to open it up in Photoshop. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to add a kind of a textured uh, background to this background. I, I want to keep it dark. I want to keep it subtle, but I want to add something of interest to that background and make it slightly different. So when I lit this, I made sure to add, add a little bit of light from both directions. That way um, he's separated from the background. It'll make um, adding this texture a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open this texture file that I have here. I'm going to go control A, control C to copy it. And then I'm just going to paste it over the top of this image. Now I'm going to go hit control T and stretch it to where it's filling up my entire image. It is going to be a little pixelated, but it's a background. Who cares? Now I'm going to uh, make some adjustments to this. I'm going to kind of desaturate it and uh, add some contrast and stuff. I'm going to do that in the camera raw filter. So I'm desaturating it, uh, bringing down the highlights, boosting my contrast, boosting my clarity a lot, bringing down the blacks, something like this. So I want to add that texture in. Something like that looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And now the way I'm going to apply this to the background is I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And you can see when I do that, uh, you can see a little bit of it here in the dark areas of the background, but unfortunately it's affecting the whole image. So what we need to do is create a mask that's going to only let it be applied to the background. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go here. I'm going to add an adjustment layer uh, to our main image. And then I'm going to just boost, boost the uh, contrast and the brightness a ton. And what that does is it's going to let us select this background much, much more easily now that it's brighter. Now I'm going to merge my visible layers. That way we have a pixel layer containing this, but we're doing it in a non-destructive way where I'm not going to be affecting the actual uh, image. So I'm going to go control alt shift E. And now that gives us that and we can delete our level our, our levels adjustment there. So now we've got this. Now while I'm selected, while I have this selected, I'm going to just start using our uh, quick selection tool and do the best job I can of selecting just that background. 
and it's going to, uh, it's a little bit time consuming, a little bit tedious, but it'll be worth it in the end. So just kind of going through, I can hit alt, hold down alt, and that will make sure that I, it'll deselect anything that's already selected. And then when I let go, it's selecting new pixels. So that's looking pretty good. See if we can get the area underneath his armpit. And get it as close as you can get it, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be using the refine edge tool to help us get the areas like around his hair and stuff. So something like that is looking good enough to me, I think. Uh, I'm going to hit refine edge and that's going to show us anywhere that we messed up like the inside of his ear. So I'm going to hold down alt, deselect that real quick. Now refine the edge. I see no glaring mistakes, just weirdness around the edges. So I'm going to take our little brush that it gives us and start painting that over, over these really detailed edges. And that's going to help us basically deselect the hair and anything highly detailed around the edges. And this is going to really make our selection way more intricate than we could ever do it in real life. If I hold down alt, it deselects or it like resets that area in case it does something weird and just kind of go around these edges. Even the sharp, clear edges, it doesn't hurt to select. And because the texture is fairly subtle, it's not going to be the end of the world if we, uh, if we don't have an absolutely perfect selection. But the better it is, the, the more flexibility we're going to have, and the more powerful the selection will be. So something like that is looking pretty good to me. So now, finish up this area right here. Now I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this selection as its own channel. So over here in the Channels tab, normally it'll be up here with Layers, Paths, and then there'll be Channels, but I have them separate. Um, I'm going to click on this right here, which will make it'll save the selection as a channel. When I do that, now we have this alpha one with this selection and we can refer back to it anytime we want. So I'm going to hit control D to deselect. I'm going to delete that adjustment layer. So we're back to this. Now I'm going to turn on our, our uh, texture layer here. I'm going to go down to our channels tab. I'm going to hold down control hit. Uh, click on the alpha one and that's going to activate that selection we just created and now up here I'm going to make a new layer mask by add layer mask by that button there and now it applies that layer mask that we made with that selection and now you can see it's only affecting it's only affecting our background now, one of the cool things is I can go back and I can refer back to that selection anytime I want. So let's say I wanted to add just a little spotlight of light kind of in the center there, but on the background not have that effect. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to select the background, then create a new layer. And now I can take my paintbrush and I can paint a brighter shade of gray and just add a couple clicks here. And when I do that, you're seeing that it's not only affecting the background and brightening the background, but it's effect, it's painting over the top of our background layer here. I, and so what I want to do is I want to add that same layer mask that we have here to this. So now I can just go down to our channels, control click on that alpha channel, then go up to layer one and create a new layer mask. And then that masks out our foreground subject. So now we can paint on this background and brighten areas, darken areas, whatever we want to do. So I could add a little bit of brightness on wherever I would like to over here, maybe something like that. And then that means that we went from this to this. 
All right, that's it guys. Just a quick little tutorial. It's something I've been doing a lot lately with all of these themed portraits, portraits that I took. There's all kinds of different uses for some of the stuff in this. Learning how to save your selection as a channel, that's going to open up tons and tons of options anytime you're working with layers in Photoshop. Thanks so much. Make sure you like and subscribe, like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.